The time period from 1900 to 1920 is known as the Progressive Era. The Progressive Era was a response to the Gilded Age and the concept of laissez-faire. During the Gilded Age, the corruption of the government was due to the growth of big corporations and industries and the increasing influence on the government. Many social, economic, and political problems were brought up during the Gilded Age. During the Progressive Era, reformers believed the government can inform the people positively. The Progressive Era focused on reforms such as women's suffrage reforms, state social reforms, political reforms, and municipal reforms. The municipal reforms focused on restricting, regulating, and denying power to the city bosses, improving public utilities and services, and addressing slum and living conditions for the lower class. The city bosses had been corrupting the government prior to the Progressive Era. They did this by essentially bribing the voters. In turn, they hoped they would receive their vote. They would give money and do many special favors for the voters, which began a trend of corrupt government. During the Progressive Era, many steps were taken in an attempt to undo the corruption that had been done by these city bosses. Decades after the Civil War, many had avoided participation in municipal government. By the end of the century, a new generation of activists were taking an interest in it, some of which included members of old aristocratic families and others a part of the new middle class. One of the notable government reforms was known as the Commission Plan. This plan was first adapted in Galveston, Texas, and in 1907 it was adopted in Des Moines, Iowa, followed by many cities soon after. The general basis of the plan was that the mayor and council were replaced by an elected nonpartisan commission. Its purpose was to weaken the political party influence over city politics that had been developed in the centuries prior. Another very important plan was known as the city manager plan. This was a measure taken in attempt to rid the government of city bosses. With this plan, government officials and councils had the power to hire an outside expert. These experts were typically professional managers or engineers who would take the place of city bosses. They would manage the departments of a city government. These men were not voted for by the public, which was the main source of corruption by the city bosses. The effect of the city manager plan was that it kept the manager separate from relying on voters so they could do their job impartially. During the Progressive Era, many reforms were taken by the municipal government in an attempt to undo and clean up what had been done. The City Manager Plan and Commission Act helped with the improvement of public utilities and services. The mayors and city councils were being replaced with a commission of nonpartisan administrators to run municipal departments in different cities. During this era, reformers focused on expanding public ownership of services like electricity, water, and gas. Reformers like Jones Toledo built playgrounds and golf courses. Urban transportation systems, along with railroads, were regulated as well for the benefit of the public. The mayor of Brooklyn, Seth Lowe, improved the public transportation system in the city. More and more services were beginning to be publicly and municipally owned, meaning they could offer lower prices and rates than service companies that were privately owned. Other important municipal reforms were the reforms aimed to improve the living conditions of the lower class. Before the reforms, tenement homes were crowded and unsanitary for the lower class to live in because there were no regulations around it. The tenement homes lacked things like ventilation and proper plumbing. The Progressive Era brought in many improvements surrounding this issue. Now, many tenement homes built were made out of stone instead of wood, and they were eventually replaced by apartment buildings. Social services were also being offered to the lower class, specifically to women, like classes in English and health. In 1901, the Tenement Act was put into place by Seth Lowe in New York. This act required the new tenement homes that were being built to be properly ventilated and allow a good amount of light. The tenement homes that didn't include the following features would be banned from being built. Jane Addams, a social reformer, founded Whole House, a tenement house that took in new immigrant laborers and members of the lower class in Chicago, Illinois. It was the first private social welfare agency in America. She later wrote a book called 20 Years at Whole House, where she states, The settlement, then, is an experimental effort to aid in the solution of the social and industrial problems which are engendered by the modern conditions of life in a great city. The house was very successful and inspired many more homes like this to be brought up all around the country. 